All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is the Managing Director of Paradigm Capital. Uh, Barry Richards joined Paradigm in 2004 and comes to us with over 15 years experience uh, in technology investment banking. Prior to leading the tech investment banking team, Terry was a high tech analyst for the Canadian technology marketplace with Paradigm Capital, CIBC World Markets, and Sprott Securities. Please give, please give him a warm welcome, Barry Richards. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Nick. Uh, very happy to be here. I have roughly 10 minutes. I want to talk to you about the public markets for Canadian technology stocks. Uh, I've been involved in this sector for almost 20 years, and 2013 was really an incredible event. Uh, a couple things I want to note. Here, I'll slip through. Um, in my mind, 2013 was the second best year in the, in the last uh, 20 years. A couple highlights I want to focus on in my presentation. Uh, in particular, we saw some transformational acquisitions. In fact, a number of companies made very large acquisitions in 2012 and 2013 and were hugely rewarded in 2013 in the public markets. Uh, financing activity, we were involved in many, uh, certainly on the rise in Canada. Uh, the number of companies actually, notwithstanding the new issues, uh, we continue to see a number of companies taken out, with some very high profile companies. And last but not least, the IPO window, which as a banker I'm pleased to see opened for the first time in many years. Okay, so what does our universe look like? This is uh, information from the TMX folks, thank you very much. Uh, uh, roughly 170 publicly traded companies. I remember uh, in, the, in the 90s we were closer to 300, but this is where we're at today. 11 companies that are worth more than a billion in market cap. 25 companies, what we call mid-cap companies, market caps 100 million to a billion. And I'll just note on this sector in particular, uh, just two years ago we were 40 companies, and I'll come back to uh, where all these companies went. Last but not least in the, in the smaller tier, uh, 133 companies. This is a sector that struggles to get attention. I think we've heard that theme a number of times today. Uh, it does not necessarily match out well with our small cap investor community in Canada. Uh, two other points I want to make here, and I, I, again, I heard this earlier today. Uh, we see inflection points, and by inflection points, I mean increases in research coverage, institutional uh, awareness and ownership, trading volumes, and access to capital. So these are important inflection points for investors and for companies alike. In the software world, we estimate that to be around $50 million in market cap, and in the hardware space, roughly 100. I put this together, I won't go through it in too much detail, but this is a similar snapshot of the United States market, uh, an incredible 2,200 publicly traded tech companies. Uh, a number of those, including the top three, Microsoft, Google, and Apple, worth a uh, trillion dollars of invested technology capital. But this is also a crowded marketplace. If you look down the bottom, I don't know if the numbers are too small, but there are 1,650 publicly traded tech companies with market caps in the United States under 50 million. So certainly a crowded market space. I spent a number of years working there. and I can tell you my own estimation is the, the thresholds for uh, tech companies are roughly 500 million to a billion for the same sort of research coverage, trading volumes, valuations, and so forth. Uh, so be careful. No better proxy for the technology market in my mind than the NASDAQ. Uh, over 4,200 actually today. Uh, this is a four-fold increase over the last four years. Pretty incredible move. This chart shows the last 20 years, and it's amazing to me, in fact, remarkable. We were just 20% below where we were in March of 2000, which is the all-time high, uh, around 5,100. So the NASDAQ uh, obviously outperforming most of the other major indices. Up almost 40% for the year. Uh, sadly, our TSX is a bit of a laggard here, up just 10%. Uh, but that certainly did not hold back the technology sector. We saw quite a resurgence. The mid cap companies put up a remarkable, this is an average number, if you can believe it, 62% for those 25 mid cap technology companies. And even more remarkable are some of the top performers in this sector Sierra Wireless, Mitel. A Vigilon, Redney, and Solium, all companies up more than 200% in the year. 
I'm going to skip the small cap sector. I'll come back to that. But large cap stocks also did well, up almost 20%. That's uh, after a very good year in 2012. They were the first to see this resurgence that I'm talking about. Uh, the small cap sector is, I think, particularly interesting uh, for this forum. 30% is a pretty good number. But if you look carefully, you'll see by mid-year, this sector was still down on the year. And this is a very large sector. I showed a couple slides earlier, 130 companies. Um, this number is misleading, really, because it's only the top 30 or 40 that put up a really big return. So I'll come back to that later. But the majority of the sector, including the micro-cap companies, remain underwater. Just one last point. I couldn't help myself. I added the mining index down almost 30% for the year. So certainly. Momentum and uh, energy around the technology sector continues to be very good. This is a slightly different segmentation of the same information on the previous slide. You'll see in the second half of the year, almost all the sec sectors uh, did well. What I did not include here that I should have included is the micro cap sector. So market caps below 50 million. Those companies have suffered. Uh, they continue to be forgotten, and the returns are almost exclusively negative. One of the other important metrics we look at as analysts and bankers is trading volumes. So on a pure share volume basis, so the number of shares, technology was up almost 20% in 2013 versus the rest of the market down 9%. And when I do it on a dollar volume basis, the returns are, the increase I should say is almost 50%. And that's relative to a 5% decline for the rest of the market. Uh, I like this scorecard. It, uh, it's pretty remarkable, given the returns I just talked about, that more than half the companies in this sector actually were down for the year. Uh, not so surprising when you look at large cap and mid cap stocks. Three quarters of those companies were up for the year. A quarter of those companies are down, I think, in most cases, probably for good reason. But it's the last sector that I want to talk about, the small cap technology sector here. Almost 60% of the companies were down for the year. This, in 2014 and 2015, is where I see the best opportunity for some significant returns. Uh, this is a sector that's been unloved for some time and, and, and really deserves a little more attention. In the beginning, I touched on acquisitions. We've seen some very large acquisitions in Canada over the last two years. I uh, could have included McDonald Detweiler acquiring Loral. Uh, Sierra Wireless divested its air card business. Uh, but I put up Red Knee and Mitel, right? Red Knee acquiring Nokia Siemens uh, at the end of 2012 and the beginning of 2013. Uh, they were very well rewarded in 2013, up more than 200%. Mitel recently announcing its acquisition, merger, whatever you want to call it, with Astra. Uh, this was later in the year, so not entirely justifying the return, but for the year, Mitel up 231%. I didn't include here, but uh, companies like Descartes, Constellation, uh, and Chalice have been making these sort of acquisitions, albeit smaller, for years, and have been similar, similarly rewarded. So I think this is going to be something that continues to work going forward. As a banker, we also look at um, financing activity. I think it's been mentioned a couple times today, 1.6 billion. Uh, both the number of deals increased significantly in the year and the size of the deals increased. Uh, we did see a number of IPOs I'm going to talk about, but uh, some pretty incredible in increases when you look at 2011 versus 2013. As a bonus or a double whammy, if you want to call that, the returns that were put up by those deals are, in many cases, exceptional. I took a smattering of the 2013 deals. Uh, these deals are up on average 50%. And when I go back to 2012, the numbers are even more impressive, uh, albeit some home runs from Redney and Avigilon. But in general, these are some very good returns. And I think that certainly helps our cause. Investors have made money, and they're looking for new opportunities. So as much as the returns have been great, the universe, especially in the mid-cap part of the universe, has seen significant deterioration. Uh, you've heard a number of times today, the numbers vary a little bit, but if I look at growth companies, we used to be almost 30% in 2000. Uh, today, we're less than 6% of the index in Canada. A number of uh, well-known companies here on the right-hand side, you'll see, have been acquired. Uh, the pace of acquisition decreased a little bit in 2013, quite a few deals in 2011 and 2012. But what I want to remind you is if I look at the two from 2013, Astra and SoftChoice, this is $800 million 
of invested technology capital in Canada. That money will be reinvested in other companies, many of which you've seen today. So this too will help our cause going forward. I said at the very beginning we saw the IPO window open for the first time in a number of years. Uh, we saw some quite high profile and successful transactions. We were involved in the Bay Lynn story, which you just would have heard about recently here. Uh, Halogen and Vixis also mentioned a number of times, wildly oversubscribed. This to me talks about the influx of commodity money that we've seen come back into technology. When I look at the scorecard, you'll see some indicators here. The equity market sentiment is very good, uh, what we call favorable. The funds flow, we'll call it moderate to favorable. And certainly IPO sentiment, the number of IPOs in the U.S. is crazy. Um, and the technology sentiment, as I described in the last few minutes, is, is quite good. I heard Art Mesher talk about this this morning. I think Canada remains an incredible place to do business. Uh, our thresholds for uh, research coverage, valuations, and so forth are a fraction of what they are in the United States. Uh, it's been my experience that Canada is a, a terrific place for technology stocks. Our investors tend to be patient, loyal, long-term, buy and hold, passive. I mean, these are, this is the best case scenario. I think it's a lot more aggressive. There's a lot more shareholder activism in the United States. Um, so this is just a quick overview. We certainly hope that many of the companies that are private that are here will continue to consider Canada as a place to do business. I think for the first time in my uh, almost 20 year career, I can say that we have seen in 2013 certain sectors where valuations are actually at a premium to the US comps. So we've, we've dealt with this problem of why should I list in Canada? The valuations are so much better in the United States. Well, in certain sectors that is in fact no longer true. Uh, one, for example, here I've listed the enterprise software space where we actually traded a significant premium to the US comparables here on an EV to EBITDA basis. And this is a forward multiple, 14.3 times for this sector relative to just under 10 times in the US. Not quite as good, but certainly fair in the software as a service space. This is an EV to revenue multiple, 3.7 times versus 4.4, certainly respectable. Okay, last but not least, I want to leave you with a couple thoughts. Uh, many people have had their thoughts here today about 2014. For me, there are a couple questions that need to be answered. Will we eventually and finally see this rally that's uh, progressed from large cap to mid cap to small cap finally hit the mid cap universe? We have a large number of these companies in Canada. Uh, and there are a number that did incredibly well. Sphere 3D, which you heard here present today, up uh, now better than 800%. BSM and PNI Digital also uh, doing incredibly well. So certainly this is a sector that deserves a lot more attention. There could be certainly some home runs we see in 2014 there. Secondly, in the mid-cap universe, this model of acquisition uh, and uh, respect and appreciation from the market, I think there are some huge winners that I've listed here and, and we would expect to see more of this in 2014. Last but not least, uh, we did touch on IPOs. Uh, we've heard from a number of private companies today and uh, individuals involved in the private community. So we certainly would expect and hope to see companies like this go public in 2014. Thank you so much.